Change Church. Uh, as I come to you today, this time of year, I basically consider this teaching a, a friendly reminder of what a real Christian's life involves. Um, I think of Romans 12, 2, that says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Your Bible tells you that those that do the will of God will inherit the kingdom. And this time of year, I think of the word traditions. Traditions, as I watch uh, the travel channel, things like that, they show all the different cultures, all the different traditions, something that keeps getting passed down and that people are brought up in and they are considered to be traditional people. And if they break away from that, there's issues. I was brought up in a traditional doctrine a traditional world, a traditional way of thinking, and anything different was met with conflict, <laughs> as our Lord himself was when he walked this earth. He wasn't conformed to this world. This time of year, you see, and we're so inundated with Christmas. Something man swears up and down something special, something wonderful, something emotional is happening. And yet, a true Christian walks away from the world, doesn't try to incorporate the things of the world. And that's what blows me away. We talk about a God of truth. The Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Well, why would we turn around and hit the people with a lie? Well, Jesus was born on Christmas Day, and, and you know, we get all, and we, we hit the people with a lie promoting a God of truth. It doesn't make sense, does it, folks? Now, I say this not, not to be overbearing, but the point is, if we're letting this slip underneath the radar, how many other things are sliding under the radar that don't belong in a Christian's life? And the sad truth is, when it comes to the doctrine of Christmas and where it origi really originated from, all you have to do is Google Christmas or Christmas Saturnalia, and you get more truth there than you would from many of the pulpits, you know, the ones that are going to be sitting there with the little candlelight vigils on the midnight on the 24th, thinking something wonderful has happened. Matthew 15, you hypocrites, well did Isaiah, I'm in Matthew 15, 7. You hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy, saying, This people draws nigh unto me with their mouth, and honors me with their lips, but their heart is from far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. We, we are so surrounded inundated and just flooded with traditions and doctrines of men that have nothing to do with God. And wasn't that your downfall? Wasn't that what you were doing in the world before you came to the Lord? He doesn't tell you to in intermingle. James 4.4 4 makes reference to the fact you adulteresses and adulteresses. Know you not that friendship with the world is enmity with God. You can't mix the things of the world with the things of God. They don't work. And not only in this tradition, but any other thing. And, you know, folks, a good rule of thumb is when you're crossing a busy street, look both ways. If everybody's going the same direction, you might want to stop and ask yourself, is that really where the Lord's leading? I mean, after all, your Bible's pretty specific to tell you, many are called, few are chosen. Many, Matthew 7, 21 through 23, many are not going the right way. Only few are going to make it. Few. Why? Because few are willing to walk a path 
being led by the Spirit. The Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit, those are the sons of God. And the doctrine of Christ takes you away from the things of the world. It takes you into the realm of the Spirit. It takes you down a different path the one that leads home. It's not heavily traveled, it's not popular, but it's the only one that'll get you where you need to be. And you have to decide at some point in time in your life, what are you gonna be? Are you gonna be the traditional Christian or so-called Christian? Or are you gonna come out from among them? Um, St. Corinthians talks about that. Second Corinthians 6.14 says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? <laughs> and what concord has Christ with Belial? Here's the one I get it. Here's, here's the rub. Here's the kicker. Keep, let's keep Christ in Christmas. Well, what's next? Let's keep Christ in gambling. You know, are we going to have a sign in Vegas? Let's keep Christ in gambling. Let's keep Christ in drug dealing. Let's keep Christ in prostitution. I can, I can put Christmas in the same category. It's a spiritual abomination. You've gone, you know, he told them in the Old Testament, when you walked away from the things of God, you went a whoring. You adulterers and don't, you can't mix and match the things of the world. Your Bible's specific to tell you one Lord one faith is going to get you home. One Lord, one faith. Not all these other, you know, how many denominations do we have out there? Well, how did that happen? Because man got involved. The carnal mind. The carnal mind, which is enmity with God. So what does he tell you to do in verse 17? Come out from among them. Or verse 16, what agreement had the temple of God with idols? <laughs> Need I say more? You are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them. Be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord. Almighty, you have to come out from amongst them. He's not going to come in there and worship with you all these false doctrines or uh, compromise. He's saying, I want you to come out. Draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you. You have to take a step of faith. You have to honestly look at everything you do in life as a Christian and say, well, let's see, what does God say in Romans 12, 2 about being not conformed to this world as compared to what man says? And then I have to choose me this day whom I'm going to serve. You know, if you want more of the Lord, you're going to have to walk a different path. You're going to have to walk more in the light. Proverbs 4.18 tells you that. The path of the just is as a shining light. It shines more and more onto a perfect day. Perfect referring to mature. You come out, you grow up. Anytime you see the word perfect, it's talking about maturing. It's about talking about growing up. Didn't you as a child one day grow up and realize it wasn't a Santa Claus? And folks, there's a lot of Santa Claus doctrines out there. They don't work. Their religion, they were never intended to work. In, verse, in chapter 7 of 2 Corinthians says in the first verse, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse us ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting, maturing holiness in the fear of God. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought as a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. Come on, folks, seriously? Are we, when are we going to take a real stand? You know, people, I get it. This is the one I get a kick out. Well, it's a wonderful time to witness for Jesus. We're talking, well, here's a witness for Jesus. When they ask you why you don't celebrate this season, there's your witness. Then you have an open, I had that happen one time back, way back in the 80s when I was working for a trucking company. Guy, guy asked me specifically, he said, well, don't you serve, or don't you uh, celebrate Christmas? I said, no. He says, aren't you a Christian? I said, well, yeah, that's why I don't do it. And that got quite a response. 
uh, back in 2 Corinthians 5, 16, wherefore know we, henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away, behold, all things have become new. You're going to have to start walking a different path. Uh, and when I think of all things becoming new, passing away, same thing it tells you in 1 John 2, 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away and the lust thereof, but he that does the will of God abides forever. So we, if you're hanging on to the things of the world, guess what? You're going to pass away. Instead of all things coming new, you're going to start, you're going to start dying. And folks, I'm not, you know, just because you let this doctor go. How many other things as you go along your walk are you going to let go? Are you going to walk away from and walk in a newness of life? The Bible's very specific. You walk in a new path. Uh, Titus 1.16, they profess they know God, but in works deny him, be an abominable, disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Seriously? You're going to promote a God of truth with a lie? And then you think people are going to keep coming to you, seeking answers? I can't tell you how many years, even after I was born again, that one day it hit me, you know, where I found out, hey, Jesus wasn't born in December. <laughs> Guess what? Um, Colossians 2.8. Right, and right on the heels of, uh, of Colossians 2, 6, where it talks about, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So when you come rooted and grounded in things of Christ, you're able to uproot old things. And verse 8, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For it's in Christ that dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him. Hell is paved with traditional people. Hell, the road path to hell, is a traditional path. It's a worldly one. The Bible tells you that not to love the things of the world. You can go to the end of Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah, the book of Ezra. The downfall of Israel was intermingling these other people, these other cultures. It happened back in Genesis 6 when the sons of God, the, 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 those that were of God were intermingling with the women uh, that weren't of God. And God was telling you not to intermingle with these people, with these men and women of these other beliefs of, this, of the world. By the way, it wasn't angels and women. That's the most idiotic, that's about as idiotic as Christmas. And so are the people that promote it. <laughs> Jeez Louise. You know, sometimes, folks, I hate to say this, but Christians are some of the most gullible and at times dumb people. Because I look at what's out there and, and the people, the way they, the way the stuff they promote, and they're being supported. It, it's not so much the, the stupid things they do, it's the people that support it. You have a Bible, you have an unction from the Holy One, you know all things. You can hear the Lord. Why would you rely on man? Man didn't die on the cross. Man didn't come up with your plan of salvation. Why are we relying on people? Especially the traditions and doctrines of men. So in the end, ladies and gentlemen, what do you really want to do? What path do you really want to walk? Which one's going to get you home? Is it that traditional one? I believe there's one more verse here I want to, oh yeah, let's, Galatians 4, I knew there was one more. Galatians 4, 8, how be it then when you knew not God, you did service unto them which by nature are no gods. Well, that explains the things before your conversion, and you bought into all this ungodly traditional nonsense. But now after you've known God, or rather are known of God, how turn you again to weak and beggarly elements whereunto you desire to be in bondage, again, to be in bondage. You observe days and months and times and years. I'm afraid of you, lest I've bestowed upon you labor in vain. Isn't that the way the world goes? 
days and months, times, years, seasons, whatever. It's the same nonsense every year. Folks, come out from among them. Be separate. Renew the mind. And not just this time of year, but the rest of your life. Double check. Look both ways before crossing the street. And if it's a busy street and man's going one way, look the other way. Because more likely than not, that's the path the Lord would have you. God bless, church.